Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. Ship my pants. I just may ship my pants. I can't wait to ship my pants. I just shipped my drawers. I just shipped my bed. And we'll do it live! Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. We may as well just rename this show Technical Difficulties. <laughs> Episode two. Every time. Every time. I put even more work in to make sure that this would go off without a hitch. And then what happens? I bump a button. <laughs> you got to make sure when you sit down, you don't hit the key. <laughs> I did. I sat down. I bumped a button on my stream deck. And I was like, no. <laughs> we are go for launch. Ah, oh, anyways, welcome back, everyone. We are Cyber School Media. This is Hall of Fandom. We'll go around, go around and do introductions here in just a brief second. We'll notice that our new fifth guy, Mr. Canada, won't Mr. Mr. Guru Movie won't be able to join us today due to some family things that are happening. So uh, we wish him all the good vibes in the world right now, and we will bring him back on in a future stream for sure. What's up? Nick, how are you guys doing over there, up there in Ankeny? Um, so, yeah, we are going to talk Grandma's Boy today. So, while we, uh, while we get into things here, look, look, Mr. Mr. Dylan's got the hard copy right there. Indeed. Where are the clips I'm looking for right now? Of course. Of course, of course, I can't find him. Well, if you would like to go ahead and introduce yourself, Dylan, and uh, with your introduction, I guess maybe tell people since this is a gamers movie, maybe what one of your favorite games or franchises <clears throat> might be, and if you played anything lately. While I look for these, right on. Uh, I'm Dylan. Um, I've been playing games since the original Nintendo. I was the big Sega guy. Um, Nintendo 64, switched over to PlayStation. Um, big sports guy. So all-time favorite franchise probably would be Madden. Um, recent years don't blow me away, but I was a pretty big-time Madden guy. Uh, I owned every copy from Madden 92 until 2015, and then now I kind of just sporadically pick one up when I can. Um, 
the Batman Arkham games. Pretty big fan of those. Um, last couple of years, uh, NHL. I wish Groovy was here. We could talk hockey a little bit, but um, the NHL series has been my go-to the last couple of years. All right, all right. How about you, Mister Dustin? Ah, yes, I am Dustin Manson. Uh, yeah, I've same same with the uh, gaming like Dylan. I uh, you know, started with Atari. I'm trying to remember if it was an Atari 2600. Um, my cousins had, and they had a crap load of games. But uh, yeah, we've always had gaming systems in the house, and. I was a big Sega guy. You know, you had the Sega and uh, Super Nintendo War, and I was a Sega guy because uh, just because uh, Streets of Rage, and then they had Turtles Hyperstone Heist. I'm a big Turtles gaming guy, which is why I have the Turtles cabinet in the video store. Pretty much every single Ninja Turtle game I have played or owned at one point in time. But uh, my real franchise is Resident Evil. If we're going to be completely honest, that's. You know, okay. when there was no horror games and then we we got Resident Evil, that was the first game I got for my PlayStation one. And um, that changed that changed everything for me. I'm like, it's like long form horror content that was actually scary, despite bad uh, uh, line readings, you know, is still fantastic. And they just keep getting better and better and better. So I'm here for it. I recently. Have you heard of Humble Bundle before? No, I have not. They got software, games, books. They do bundles of whatever these things are, and they will do deep discounts. And then the money that they make from it goes directly to a charity. And so they recently, within the last few months, did a Humble Bundle for the entire Resident Evil franchise. Woo. So someone who's not ever really played the games... I bought the whole franchise for like 15 bucks nice. for PC. Even the new village game was included in that. Damn. So I've got the whole franchise to play through. I'm a big oh. fan of five resident evil five was, and it's not real popular. I know people kind of hate on it, but that one kind of hyped me up a lot. That's okay. You know, the, some of the entries that people weren't hype over were ones I really liked. Uh, was it Operation Raccoon City, which is essentially like a glorified run around and shoot zombies game? It's not scary in any way, shape, or form, but it was, I don't know if I just needed it at that point in time, you know, but it it, it scratched the itch for me. I was like, this is this is fun. It, it has a, replay value. That was the first one I ever played, and then I found out it was nothing like the franchise. Right, at all, at all. What? No, it's an offshoot. But since I can't, I don't have the clips pulled into OBS because I'm a failure. Um, I'll pull it up in a little screen share here, and then we'll we'll do a little introduction for Shades and the Cat. <laughs> so let that me, sounds uh, like a radio show. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't think Shades, I think he's still muted. Because he's got no audio feedback. Do you guys hear him? Nope, not yet. Ba, 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 ba. Muted on the screen. I see his mouth moving. I was <laughs> muted on the screen. Ah, there you go. Oh, there is. <laughs> Son of a biscuit. It happens. Okay, so we have a special little intro here because if you didn't know, well, I guess before I pull that up, I guess if you didn't know, Shades, Dylan, and I were all actually in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> so Shades, you know, he, he's got his own little special intro. <laughs> What's up, Silver Fox? Him and all those stink ass hoes. Dude, he's <laughs> living a fantasy. It's so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's Shades. Shades, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Shades. This is Seven. Uh Yay. <laughs> I, I remember back the old giant square brown and black uh, Atari. Yeah. Like Pong and Frogger. Mm -hmm. But I definitely remember Resident Evil 2 running around. Yes. Was it Resident Evil 2, the house? Was that the first one? The first one's the house, and the second first one's, one's the, mansion. the city. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, yeah. I remember the first one then, running around the house. And then the, the, 
thing that comes with the the disc the case uh in the very back of the booklet we talked about the movie it was supposed to come out like years ago Mm -hmm. and that just never happened I, i waited for that forever and then, I mean, eventually it came out, but just not what it was supposed to be. No. The closest thing you're going to get is that uh, the newest one that everyone hates on. Uh, Welcome to Raccoon City. Yeah, it, it's fairly it, accurate, though. It's not a it's great fun. movie, but yeah, at least yeah. they held tight to the storyline. Yeah, it was it was as close as we're going to get. We get the mansion. We get, uh, you know, all kinds of characters. But yeah, those uh the original movies. So far removed. Yeah. Yeah, for the most part, I'm not like a, I don't have set things that I play. I just kind of, I find a game and I play it for a while. Like, What have you been playing right now? Yeah, right now I'm <clears throat> running around like a cowboy again, shooting people in the face on Red Dead 2. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I played that one a while ago and I beat it and then I just picked it up again. I don't know. You play online where you just run around and cause havoc? I have occasionally, but... Not very often. Online is just crazy. Just sometimes it's the Wild West, maybe. Thing. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> you just, just wake, wake up and up boom, shot in the face. Wake up and boom, syphilis. You know, <laughs> Old West. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that being said, here's. Here's my little fun intro. It's pretty, pretty uh, on, on, on track. What is that ringing? Do I have a tumor? <laughs> <laughs> it, I did, in fact, have a tumor. Yes, yes. So <clears throat> I am Flynn Darius, and I am your hostess with the mostess, rocking my, my kick-ass tape head shirt. Representing. Go, go, get your, go get your copy of tape head now. Uh, gaming. I started gaming on an Atari. <clears throat> Wasn't allowed to have a gaming system until later, and I started with an Xbox, but played some Game Boy. But my favorite, probably one of my favorite all-time games is Star Wars Jedi Academy. Create your own character. You're being trained by Luke. You can go good guy or bad guy, depending on the choices and powers you take, and then there's different endings. That game got me into doing graphics and everything because I was trying to learn how to skin and like I was downloading skins and playing online and I still love that game. I still wish they would give us a Star Wars game like that, but you know, hey, they uh, would rather not make money. Justin, when you were in the Sega days, you ever mess around with the Sega CD and stuff? I did not have a Sega CD. I wasn't no. uh, I wasn't rich enough for the Sega CD. I wasn't either. I, I just had friends that had them. Yeah, the, I, had, I, I remember Echo, the dolphin, like that being yeah. the craziest yeah. thing ever. But yeah, I, I never I got to game. have I one. played the crap out of that one too. Yeah, I had the Sega CD and then the the 32X you could stick oh. in top of it. Yeah. So my my Sega was like massive. <laughs> like an accordion. Yeah, Yeah, it was huge. Because nice. the Sega, the CD mounted to the side and then the 32X you snapped in the console, the cartridge slot. And so it stood up on top, and then it was just this massive. I don't know. It was a pretty good time. Nice. We, uh, my my same cousin who had that uh, original Atari, when it came time, it was you know after Sega, and it was like, where are you gonna go? Like PlayStation, or and then there was some offshoot um, systems. Like who are you gonna bet on? You know, like what system's gonna last? Uh, my cousin, they went all in on Atari Jaguar. So they uh, bought an Atari Jaguar and um, it obviously didn't last, but it had some fun games. It had a really cool alien versus predator game, which was like um, a first person you could play as the predator, the alien or a Marine. So you got like your first person um, shooter style, but uh, it was supposed to be 64 bits, but it was, I don't believe it. I, I, I don't believe the bit rate because <laughs> it was pretty rough. That was a super competitive era. Mm-hmm. You had the Jaguar. Uh, Sega came out with the Dreamcast. Yep. Nintendo yeah, had the 64. I only yep. played, played the Dreamcast for Crazy Taxi. It was legit the only reason. <laughs> nice. I remember that game. Uh, that was that was super rad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I've been playing 
Guardians of the Galaxy game. That's pretty fun. The new one where you play as uh, Star Lord and you can control the other Guardians, and the music on it's pretty kick ass. Is that uh, on? Is that on yeah. PC? Yeah, it's on a lot of different things, but I play everything on PC. So I'm a hundred percent on PC with everything. So. Uh, I got to bring up a game that I PlayStation haven't played yet. PlayStation never even turns on anymore. <laughs> I have a Japanese I, PlayStation. The, the X and the square or circle are switched. They're flipped because that's how it works over there. Oh, I, see. I wanted a white PS4 and I was buying it specifically mm. for PlayStation exclusives and Madden. Mm. And so I bought one off of eBay, a special white edition, and they had no idea. I get it. I boot it on. Everything's in Japanese. And I'm like, <laughs> what am I supposed to do? I learn Japanese, homie. <laughs> so I had to go find a YouTube video about someone showing how to go to the language settings so that I could put it in English. And then I figured out that everything was flipped. So I had to, like, it, it you could change that once you got into the game. But on the main screen, it's like that. And it won't play oh. any region DVDs that are from here. Right. Yeah. So you got to buy different region stuff. Yeah. So, so <laughs> it just, it just sits next to me. <clears throat> a glorified paperweight now, but, mm -hmm. and all those games are now on steam and I've been playing them on steam. I'm almost done with God of war. So, but anyways, speaking of video games, we have a movie to discuss. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Now that we're 20 minutes in, I think we can start talking about it. Um, but I had in my notes if conversation revolves around gaming comes about during the stream lean into it so we lean <laughs> into it we got that out of the way early so so as most people know if you've seen this movie we've got our main character Alex who gets kicked out of his house because he couldn't pay rent because his roommate was spending it on let's say women of the evening yes instead <laughs> working girls yeah. working girls and yeah. so he gets kicked yeah. out and ends up moving in with his grandma and he works at a gaming company so Which seems like the most fun job in the history of oh, ever for sure yeah that's all i wanted to do growing up was be a just be a game tester mm -hmm. you know it was seemed like so much fun now i kind of wish i would because the industry sucks <laughs> but did you know, so so in this movie, they uh, worked with an actual game developer. Demonic was actually a game. The game that they feature in the movie, that's Alex's project, was a game that was in production when they were making the movie. It got canceled before it got released. Hmm. Hmm. It was uh, made by a game developer called Terminal Reality. They're still around making games. Um, that game demonic was actually supposed to be, you can find the, the game trailer online still. Um, it was supposed to be a story by Clive Barker about a demon being summoned to take out the murderous CEO of a corporation. And you could actually possess characters throughout the game until a certain point where you could be strong enough to then come through as the demon which seems like a really interesting concept that I have not seen in a game, mm -hmm. you know? It's, but, uh, it's interesting that you bring that up about Clive because if if this game got scrapped, I'm I'm pretty sure a couple of his things ended up turning into games. I'm, it, it was The Suffering, a Clive Barker story was, that became a game, maybe, I think. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, yeah, his it seems like his... Xbox game that I'm trying to think of what it was called it only was on xbox you couldn't get it on playstation and it was like a survival horror game that came out i want to say like on the xbox 360 maybe yeah i just i know i'm pretty undying? sure undying i right, googled clive barker video games and i'm getting jericho and undying jericho is the one i was thinking of there you go yep okay because evils brought that up to me a couple of times because he used to play it but uh yeah it seems like that's the proper source material you let a guy like clive barker um give you some characters it's gonna go one of two ways <laughs> <laughs> leather and snl yes, yes. 
They also had a canceled game called Sundown that was about zombies that was going to be similar to Left 4 Dead that was being co-developed with Guillermo del Toro. Nice. Nice. But this company also made the uh, Blood Rain series, Terminal Velocity. They made a Blair Witch game in 2000, so you're going to have to hook Remix up with that one. Mm-hmm. We did they play made the newer Ghost Blair Witch game. game in 2009. That was an awesome game. Which one? And... Uh, also, uh, the Ghostbusters 2009 game. Oh, I love that game. I pre-ordered it. Yep, where you're yep, like, these guys made that game. Yep, that game's awesome. And then, and then Dustin's favorite game of all time, Def Jam yeah. Rap Star. Ah, a little Def uh, Jam. <laughs> <laughs> that's the 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 beat 'em up, right? Like the tournament fighter. No, that's uh. No, that's like the rock band knockoff. I think. Uh, oh, the, the Def Jam fighting game was sick. Yeah, I was gonna say I like that, but I don't know about this. So there's a there's a rap game where <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, it's like DJ it's just Hero, like rock band, Guitar Hero, but you're rapping instead. You get turntables. I I don't want to play. <laughs> just we're gonna do a 24 hour stream mm-hmm. on 3B video of just Dustin playing DJ Rap Star. Let's do it. <laughs> I knew yeah, high the, school. What does that game. mean? That <laughs> the game that they use throughout the movie for the Eternal Death Slayer is actually a modified version of Blood Rain 2. Sweet. So, this is, a, is this a Happy Madison movie? Yes. Yes. I, and I was going to say, I'm pretty sure it is. Only Happy Madison movie to start with a different intro credit than the rest of them. Because they always go, the you know, terrific. Mm-hmm. But this one, this one, he says something else. I don't remember what he says. I he think says this something like else. The, the first or second one that didn't have Adam Sandler in it. Yeah, he was he was behind the scenes doing stuff, but he was not in the film. All of his buddies are for sure. Yes, we're just missing like oh, David yeah. Spade. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's in it. Oh, or uh, it. Kevin James. Yeah. Yes, he's missing because yes. that's that's later, right? Like, yeah, so he comes later. Yeah, for for all of those who are uh, out out watching this. I can go find through all of my. Go eat a hamburger and choke on a David cow Spade's the, dick. The, the waiter. I don't know why yeah, that yeah, totally yeah, went on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> At the vegan yeah, restaurant. Sure. <laughs> At the vegan restaurant. Yeah, I just pulled up a clip of of him insulting the group. <laughs> but, uh, you know, this is a fun movie. It's been around for a while. Most people have seen it who want to see it at this point. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Rewatching it, it's just like it's got so much rewatch value just because it's so funny. It's extremely if I pay quotable. extra. Can I get some grease and fat? Yeah. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> oh, but so what would you guess a budget for a movie like this would be? I think it was like 30 million. It had a pretty big Holy budget. balls. I could be wrong, but. I was looking um, at box office and whatnot, and I know it, it made money, but it made some cash. Five but million. Yeah. Oh, I was way off. Five million Santa dollar budget. Night. It barely made its money back when it came out. It was not very popular when it came out. It's another one like, like Trimmers <laughs> that rentals and home video blew this thing up and made it as, as popular as it is today. Yeah, and word of mouth, the, man, for sure. Yep. The, the reason he's driving around a junk car in that movie is because they ran out of money to get him a car for the movie. <laughs> nice. Like, oh, this will do. It fits. Yeah, it fits his character perfectly. Uh, I think this is that's where this movie shines the most is the rewatchability because we're in like a weird era. When this movie came out, a lot of the comedies that were coming out, they were like one and done funny. You know, you'd watch something like just something random, let's say something with Ryan Reynolds and you'd watch it and you'd go, that was okay. That was pretty funny. And then like, you just forget it. It just becomes another movie. But grandma's boy, when you watch it, it like those jokes and those setups and all that stuff stays with you. So it has re rewatchability. And then it becomes like a part of your vernacular. It becomes, you know, you're bringing up those quotes constantly. And it's just like, you you don't need to rewatch it because it's it's all in here, but you want to rewatch right. it because it's so much fun. Yeah, it's just rent free, man. 
lives rent free. It, it grossed over $35 million in DVD sales. Yeah, I so can believe that for sure. It did pretty well and on that side of things. Um, this is when so movie gallery was still rocking. So. Yeah, right. Like speaking of the movie rental places, um, apparently on the Stiff Socks podcast, when Nick Swordson went on, he talks about how Adam Sandler had a meeting with the uh, then CEO of Blockbuster in uh, the 2010s. And he said that Grandma's Boy was one of the most stolen movies of all time because nobody fucking returned that movie ever. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, once you watch it, it got its, its hooks in you, you know. Uh, it's it's kind of an ongoing joke here in in our house that I I think I own maybe six copies of this movie because when my wife and I first got together, for whatever reason, anytime like she would go out and go shopping and she would go do something, she'd be like, "I bought you a movie," and she'd come back and it'd be Grandma's Boy. She'd be like, "Because we we need to watch this again," and I I couldn't remember if we owned it, and she would buy it. She'd be the one to rebuy it and be like, "We own this." I'm like, "Yes." Yes, we do. You just keep now, buying. You've got yeah. like 30 copies of Grandma's Boy. Like, how do you not remember this? I, it, it became like a thing where I would have to, like on Christmas, I'd still have one wrapped in cellophane. I'd just give it to someone. And then eventually people stopped watching DVDs. So I'm like, these ones just live here, you know? <laughs> yeah, we had a conversation with someone the other day. I won't say who or about what movie, but they were like, hey, have you seen this movie yet? And they said, no, because I don't have a DVD player. And I go, they're like, yeah. Dude, five bucks, man. This is the reality we live in. I saw, I'm in a physical media collecting group on Facebook and someone posted pictures of being at a Goodwill and getting a 4K Blu-ray player at a Goodwill, $7. I'm like, that's a steal. Yeah, you sh yeah, buy all of them. <laughs> right. Put some on eBay, whatever. Put one in every room in your house, including your bathroom. That's a great idea. Yes. <clears throat> Cinema now, in every room. <laughs> now, if you didn't know, there are two copies of this movie out there. An unrated. There and, uh... is a unrated and a rated version. And I know Dylan was saying how he was interested to know what the difference is between them. And I found what the difference is. And let me pull up my screen share here. And we'll go through what these differences are between these two movies. It's on one of my many, many browser windows here. About seven minutes of it's footage real on brief. the camera. There's, there's not a whole Less lot. Less than that. <laughs> so there's alternative footage. Okay. In the, uh, just with how they shot certain scenes in the R rated version he's standing by the car and grabs his clothing and is talking to josh in the unrated it shows him walking to the room's door while josh and alex are still talking so very deep stuff here oh yeah yeah we're talking uh game game changing footage <laughs> look look how different it is <laughs> <laughs> i'm glad they rated that yes <laughs> Yes, you know, the, yeah, some asshole in the MPAA was like, I don't like the angle, and maybe that scene's a little too long. Trim that talking scene down. That's gratuitous. That's so weird. It's not, are they, so, is the conversation vulgar? I don't. It might that, be. I don't. It says it's, but it has like the same, it's just shot differently. Yeah. So what's the, what is the purpose of, <laughs> who knows? The next one though is, is something that really, you know, it's about the birthday suit. So during the regular cut, when he stands up, I can't scroll down for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, because if I scroll down, you're going to see, you're going to see this. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> so in the unrated cut, you get to see Peter Dante's ass. <laughs> nice. For all those ladies out there and some of those fellas. Oh, there were him him talking about it on a podcast he went on where he went to go do this scene and like all these women were standing around just waiting for it. 
And he's like, what are all these women doing here? Like, they're waiting to see you naked. And he goes, that ain't happening. <laughs> this is supposed to be a closed set. Right. <laughs> What's happening? Yeah. My only question is, why am I standing there looking at this naked dude? <laughs> <laughs> why not? I mean, at least you're at least you're not crude. Shades, that's not the boom pole. <laughs> oh, <my bad. laughs> oh. Shades, I know you need to get close to the mic so we can hear you, but that's not the mic. <laughs> so the next scene is there's some uh, alternative footage. Where he's talking to uh, Dr. Shakalulu about the lion. Nice. Just a couple little extra scenes. There's an extended scene about, I can't scroll down any further. <laughs> <laughs> of Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill, by far, had the best scene. They're the best role in this entire film. It's pretty trimmed down, right? Yeah, the, the rated version is pretty brief. Yeah. <laughs> I wish you could just scroll down. <laughs> Did I even have that on a screen share? He said, we can't see, fool. Man, somebody fire me. Somebody fire me. None of that. None of that you guys could see. <laughs> well, you're about to. You're about to see all of it. We are professionals here, okay? This is to some my... professional stuff that we're doing here. See, oh, someone's cool. supposed to be reading chat and letting me know these things because, because I've got so much going on. That's shades. Uh -huh. That's all shades. Well, from what I could see, all I was looking at was the, uh, the starting soon background. So there's the scene you were missing the most. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we were just scrolling through looking at the comparisons of the unrated and rated cut, and there's not. There's not much. It's like a minute of extra footage. It's just some alternate scenes and Peter Dante's ass, essentially. And then boobies, which we can't show anyway. So why it's educational, saying, we can. This is not hot yoga. Well, I was to say, all you got to do is look up nude yoga and you can just watch hours and hours of naked ladies on YouTube because it's educational. It's art. Yep. <clears throat> just, uh, yeah. Thank me later. <laughs> All right. Everybody just left the stream now to go watch naked yoga. <laughs> <laughs> Save that for the end. Yes. Now, did you know that this movie had an alternative name that it was originally going to be named? I did not. Nana's boy instead of grandma's boy. That's why they say that during the movie. And in a lot of the behind the scenes stuff I watched, they called it Nana's Boy because that was the first working title that they had. Did they go with Grandma's Boy because it's sooner in the alphabet? I know that became a thing somewhere around that time, right, Dylan? Like, for, especially for streaming, they started like movies started getting like A titles. So they'd yeah, be like, that's kind of like a precursor to like search engine optimization. Mm -hmm. People didn't want to scroll through, you know, their, their attention span. They'd click something just to play it. Yeah. So maybe it had, I don't know if videos, I don't recall like movie gallery having alphabetical. It was always like new release. Triple A towing. Um, no, I wonder why it's triple A. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Same reason uh, my wife and my phone is ah wife. <laughs> so she's the first contact. And this was something I was really interested in because I couldn't find very much behind the scenes stuff online and I don't have the movie. And I know Groovy did a lot of watching about commentary and behind the scenes. So I was like, oh, this is going to be fun to talk about. <laughs> yeah. And now I don't have these questions answered. So now I'm just going to have to have a talk with him because like, I want to know how they shot that last scene with the elephant and everything yeah. shaking. I'm <laughs> like, that would have been fun to hear them talk about how they shot that. Well, I might have a spare copy for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> if there's anything anybody watched from behind the scenes stuff that they would like to add to this conversation today, I could not get my hands on very much of it. But what do you got, Dylan? <laughs> I don't know a whole lot about like the BTS stuff there, but it, we talked about like my rental experience was the first time seeing it i didn't see it in theaters um mm -hmm. i came across it as a rent um 
I think it's a movie that today would have just hit streaming. I mean, rental stores don't exist anyway, but right. You know, um, Netflix, if they'd been kind of earlier adopters of a streaming platform, I think it probably would have went straight to streaming. Um, and with the money it made in video, it might've went straight video if they had kind of known, I think they, they really parlayed that happy Madison connection, but you know, the, the Sandler sidekicks didn't have quite the same draw that Adam Sandler movies had. Yeah. Um, that is true. Like, but it, it is like, it does have that snowball effect. So it did, uh, uh kind of take over. And it's weird because right around this time, Adam Sandler's like buddies started making better movies than Adam Sandler. At least there was like a brief period, even though like I like, uh, don't mess with the Zohan and, and stuff like that. Um, there is a definite like dip in the quality, you know, but, uh, this was a video store rental for me as well. It was just kind of one of those because every Friday I would go to movie gallery and just peruse and pick something and um, interesting hand-drawn cover art, you know, and then plus all the funny people. So gave it a go. And like I said, it just became part of my life. Yeah, It's like a, every character actor's fantasy. What <laughs> if we had a whole movie of all character actors? Yes. Yeah, yeah that's, grandma, that's grandma's boy. <laughs> Speaking of character actors, Nick Swartzen, there's there's gay robot posters and things in the background all over, which is one of the bits that he used to do. And there's some stuff like that all throughout the movie in the background from things different people have been involved with. I love me well, some Nick Swartzen. He was one of the writers, so I'm sure you know he had a free reign to work a lot of that stuff in. And I actually have I there there's some not really breaking news because the podcast I watched was from three years ago, but Nick Swartzen's been going around in his stand-ups and telling everybody that Peter Dante, you know, when you're on set, you're not smoking the real thing that you're filming, but he keeps telling people that Peter Dante went out and bought his own real weed to smoke on set. And he keeps telling everybody that that's how it went. And I watched a podcast Peter Dante did and he was with, with an interview with project nerd and he's like i had been eight months sober as of filming this movie i was not going out and buying my own weed to smoke on set Nick, he's just that good of an actor telling people <laughs> <laughs> he has a very convincing burnout aura that's yes. for sure yeah his character's fantastic you know some like people his name can... is dante and his real name is peter dante <laughs> <laughs> some people can really nail that and then other people it's like they're doing an imitation of someone who's high you know what yeah. i mean and and he like my just... favorite marty from cabin in the woods yeah <laughs> people in this town drive in a very how to roll a joint counterintuitive manner <laughs> i spent five thousand dollars to make that bug <laughs> but yeah so i found that because that was a fun fact i found and then when i was watching an interview i'm like that fun fact is wrong <laughs> everybody out here believe in it he also said that uh nick swartzen said that it was really weird kissing shirley jones while filming their their love making scenes because her husband was present on set the whole time oh yeah yeah i i've always kind of like wondered about that i've never had the we, you know i mean we sh shot the shower scene in in tape head and then we have the like the the lady of the night in the in the short and i know how we were how we achieved those things but when it comes to intimacy on camera how difficult that is like to you know i mean like what if you're in between takes and you're at crafty and you're eating funyuns and then you you know get called on a set and then you got to make out with someone and you you got funyun mouth or whatever like it's just, it's a weird thing and then plus you got 40 people standing around you and how can it feel natural? How can it? Uh, I, I've seen a lot of footage of uh, they have like intimacy coordinators now on set. Yes. Which, you know, with, and I hate to even like use hashtag stuff, but like the Me Too movement, I think uh, productions are a lot more tightly guarded. There's a yeah. lot more um, a need for intimacy coordinators and things like that. So, you know, back in the day, it was just 50 people in a room and the two leads have a really awkward situation. But, yeah, now that stuff's really, really patrolled. Good. Kind of like you would need an armorer so you make sure Alec Baldwin doesn't shoot somebody. Oh, you mean this guy? 
<laughs> huh? What? What? Oh, I missed him. It's still there. We oh, he's there. A six second delay. He's there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the real uh, shooter, McGavin, right there. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. But I'm butch. Oof. Yeah. But is well, that intimacy uh, coordinator is a is genius? Oh, it's brilliant. I think it's it's super safe. It's convenient. It's helpful. Um, you know that helped when we were filming. You know, Megan doing the shoots that she does, her boudoir shoots and whatnot. You know, it was just her and our actresses. So there's a ton of comfort and a ton of experience there. So you know, yeah. our sets were super safe. There's no no slime balls or greasy dudes peeking in windows. Mm-hmm. We're not crossing any lines. No. Uh, and you gotta you gotta wonder, like on a set of a movie like this, because it's all a bunch of buddies and they're all just kind of, I would wager to bet that a lot of what ends up on screen was uh, improv, you know, a lot of ad libbing going on because that's just kind of the, the looseness that those guys have, like what that atmosphere is like, because like with a, with a comedy, it feels like there's a lot of pressure to be funny. You know, if your joke doesn't land or, the vibe isn't met like it could be stressful. So I wonder what it was like on set trying to keep that loose. Well, especially like uh, you get one shot to do a punchline, but in movies you're doing take after take after take, you know, to, to hit something and have it be comedic. I I can't imagine what that's like doing like 20 takes of a joke. Mm -hmm. You know, if I hear a joke two times from two different people in the same day, I'm like, I already heard that one. (laughs) Right. I get to keep that laughter as authentic as possible without yeah. having to force it too much and sound unnatural. Yeah. Uh, which but then there's times where I imagine you're just like, there's days where you're just like, it's hard to get taste because everybody's just laughing their ass off. Cause this, and this is also shot on film. Yep. So I believe shot, so. shot on film. Um, you don't really have the luxury of just going and going and going like we do now where you could just fill up hard drive after hard drive after hard drive with take, but my movies are longer now. Yeah. Yeah. And like, so if you're ad libbing and like say Dylan ad libs a joke and I flub my reaction to it, like, well, we're not going to get that magic back of him, you know, making someone crack or whatever. So yeah, just seems difficult. (laughs) This is, we've been talking about the cast a little bit. Pull up the whole cast list here and remember to change my screen for everybody <laughs> so they can see what we're talking about. You know, we're professionals here. You know, it was this movie was more Alan Covert's baby than than any anyone. Um, he got the initial concept for the idea um, when his dad had bypass surgery and he went to stay with him for a little bit to help out. And his 87 year old grandmother decided she had to come stay and help out as well. So the three of them were crammed into a tiny condominium together. And he came up with the concept of the movie then because of that. Nice. And, uh, you know, he plays a great character. I always enjoy him in all his Adam Sandler movies, but this is definitely out of most of the roles he plays. I really like him in this role. I guess he, he definitely runs with it for sure. Oh yeah. He, uh, this is the movie where he kind of proved that he, could be more than a side character. And I think um, little Nicky, you know, he, he has a lot of scene like scenery in that movie that he chews it up. He's very funny. And I think that might've been the proving ground. Like, I, you know, if, if I had like my own thing, I could probably carry it. I'm, I'm probably yeah. good enough to carry it. And he is, and he's super likable. And I think like it works because he's kind of a, uh, and every man, you know, like, and that's another thing that works with someone like Adam Sandler is they're not like particularly like the most handsome guy in the room, but they feel relatable. Adam Sandler's a billionaire dresses like a dresses like a fucking goon, like me, like gym shorts year round, you know, like they just feel like someone you um, would know. Linda Cardellini does not feel like that. <laughs> no, you're not bumping into her at the library or whatever. No, I would love no. to bump into her at anywhere. Bump into her a bunch so, of times. I was, that's why we need an intimacy coordinator. 
Yeah. So. <laughs> I was one of the biggest fans of Freaks and Geeks. You know, that's one of her early works. Um, that's Jason Segel, yeah, right? right? So, yeah. Yeah, there's Freaks and Geeks right there. Um, yeah, Linda Cardellini, she's she's up there. She's in rarefied air. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and she does a great job in this oh, yeah. movie. There's nobody who drops the ball in this movie, really. No, the acting is solid. You know, all yeah. the Doris Roberts. I always knew her because my parents watched Everybody Loves Raymond all yeah. the time. Yep. And Shirley Jones and Peter Dante, another one that's an Adam Sandler that he just was phenomenal in this movie. Shirley Knight is, uh, isn't she the Mista Mista lady from Happy Gilmore? Yes. So, yes, yeah. Yes. So she's kind of like a little staple. Who's Shirley Jones? She's an icon. Um, not a big fan or super knowledgeable about her earlier works, but I know uh, her filmography is pretty solid. She's in The Music Man. Looks like she, does, she did a lot of like musicals and different things. Cougar Town, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Sesame Street, let's go. Law and Order. That's that's my bread and butter right there. Who hasn't been in Law and Order at this point? Mm -hmm. I have not yet. <laughs> One day. <laughs> not yet. My, not I yet. See, my time will come. I'm going to be corpse number two. And, uh, you know, Nick Swartzen, who everybody's very familiar with. Kevin Nealon, who I really enjoy and things he's oh been my God. I really liked him in Weeds, man. He was fantastic in that show. You see, he has a very unique, dry sense of humor. And that's, yeah. and he, I don't know where he found that, but it's kind of just like his brand. Well, you know? that, that era of SNL, a lot of those guys had that, you know, Norm MacDonald, Kevin Nealon. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. You just, th those are the, the best right there. Norm is the king, but yeah, that real kind of norm the, that deadpan, like the ability to say such absurd things without cracking is like yeah. second to none. Yeah, he's awesome. And you know, Jonah Hill had the best role in the whole movie, he got to suck on titties forever. <laughs> Like, we're going to put you in this. You're rarely going to say anything, but you're going to suck on tits for most of the movie. Okay. Yes. Hey, they okay. should have put him in uh, Little Nicky with Kevin Nealon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Little tassels. Yeah. <laughs> and I saved Joel David Moore till the end because, you know, our, our resident horror experts have a soft spot for a movie that he is in. Absolutely. Uh, Mr., he is uh, the, the king of hatchet. Where's it at so on his list? Be, be 2006, 2006, 2007. And then he, he had that little cameo in hatchet three. There it is. Up, up, up. So a bit of an after. Yeah, there you go. Good old Ben. You've never seen hatchet. Go watch it tonight if you can. Go find it, watch it. I had never seen it until this man kept raving about it. And then while I was laid up after surgery, I watched the whole franchise. There's four movies, and they're all an absolute blast. Now you just have to watch Holliston. Yes. Yes. It's perfect. So I did find a fun fact that I was wondering if he had said in the interview, Joel David Moore, that... uh he wasn't sure with all the interviews he's done if he'd actually told this one before or not. So I'm wondering if I've got if I've got a fun fact about Hatchet that you don't know or not. Hmm. Well, give it to me. So the scene where he throws up. You know any behind the scenes information about that scene? I do not. I know something about Hatchet. Dustin doesn't <laughs> mark this down in history. You got inside info. So apparently, like, he can actually make himself throw up. So instead of, he was like, he always hates it when people use the fake stuff and then don't do a good job with it. So he's mm -hmm. like, I'm just going to drink a ton of water 
And then as soon as we get to the end of running, like it, it was time. And so he actually threw it up and then they gave him a concoction that was like tomato and a whole bunch of different stuff mm-hmm. that he ended up chugging for the scene that got put in the movie. But like, he actually was doing that for real. It wasn't fake. It wasn't practical effects. That was <laughs> him throwing up on screen. You're nice. welcome. <laughs> but I was telling Dylan, I'm like, I came across the fun fact about Joel from Hatchet. He can he can regurgitate. Oh, it's like, uh, yeah, he's like Steve-O. He can swallow a goldfish and puke it back up. Gnarly. So... I thought that was interesting. So then I had to, I had to go rewatch Hatchet that night. So I watched Hatchet this week, and uh, had to rewatch it, and it was just as good on rewatch. Oh, it's super fun! So all of them we'll are have super to maybe fun. cover that on our channel one of these days. Hatchet three gets we'll just, crazy. Yeah, we'll just I love give Hatchet. you the floor. <laughs> so with uh, with Joel David Moore, I mean he's done so in Hatchet. He's funny. But he's not this over the top person that he is in Grandma's Boy. And then he did another movie, um, Spiral, called Spiral, where he's like a kind of a deranged artist. And he has a really uh, stoic performance in that movie. And that, so it's, it's crazy to see his range go from who he is in grandma's boy, which is as I swear, they're just like, go as over the top as you want, because he is absolutely hilarious, but he's dialed in too. like, he never takes it right. too far either. Like he just, I don't know where he found that character. Maybe he knew somebody like that in high school, but right. I'm like, I need to know more about yeah. this character. How did you create this <laughs> hilarious dude? Who's got a second voice. That's a robot. With the like, bat cave, even like he's down. <laughs> does my music frighten like, you? Just rock. Yeah, does his music frighten you? Do you know the the sound effect for the door in his office is from uh, one of the Doom games, one of the old school Doom games. It's the same sound when the door is open from that game. <laughs> nice. I did not know that, but now I'll never not hear it. <laughs> yep, from Doom, nineteen ninety three. Perfect. Like I like digging up these little tidbits and it's like, it just shows like the, the care that they put into these movies, even when it's something that's supposed to be super goofy, Mm -hmm. like, Hey, this door has got to sound like something from a video game because that's something he would do, you know? Yeah. So, uh, I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but I'll, I'll just, I'll word this, uh, as, as people who partake or, or party. Uh, have you ever found yourself watching Antique Roadshow and like getting super hyped about it? Are you guys like Antique Roadshow? I folks? don't watch TV. I thought it was going a different direction. Uh, <laughs> have you ever hooked up with a bunch of old old ladies? <laughs> um, so I've never watched Antique, even when it was on. Like I never watched it on public access and stuff. Like we don't even have regular TV here. Like we don't even have a digital antenna or anything, so it's yeah. all streaming. And then, if YouTube it was TV streaming, would you watch it? Season, <laughs> probably not. Like, if I'm gonna watch something like that, I'm gonna go watch like Pawn Stars or something. The best but... I can do is 750. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I met a guy. Shout out book review up in Rochester, Minnesota. He was on. He went on to be filmed. I don't know if it's aired or not. When he was in Minneapolis, he got on supposedly on one of the episodes with uh pawn stars so Badass. we'll have to dig in and see if that ever aired and what episode it was so we can take a look he had some little books he had him he bought them from him too so nice. but uh yeah and uh no i've never never really been into antique <laughs> road show not, not yet huh <laughs> <laughs> your never, days never really been my thing but i can't imagine like just like the movie itself, her coming across Sophie's tea and then all the grandmas drink it and get super baked. Dude, the, the, my favorite scene in that whole movie is when he first spends the night there, when he first moves in and she plays the prank on him. She plays the prank. 
that that will never not be funny. That is like she's cool. That yeah. just establishes <laughs> yeah. how cool she is as a grandma. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. Uh, and then as everyone who has a grandma knows, like the giant breakfasts and everything too. Like that's oh, yeah. that's just how it and is. And the mix of random shit in the fridge. Mm-hmm. I don't even know what you, you know are, but I will eat is, the fuck out of you. <laughs> you. You know that there's actually a conspiracy about this movie. The case of the vanishing banana. When he puts the food <laughs> in the oven, and I noticed it when I watched it, and then I found a Reddit thread about it. <laughs> he has a whole tray of random shit from the fridge, and he has a banana on the tray when he puts it in the oven. And then when he pulls it out, the banana's gone. That's oh, a bad, bad prop master right there. But yeah, yeah no, right. Maybe people like that. And then there's like, there could be an in universe lore where he was just so baked. He imagined the banana and it wasn't really there. Do, do bananas bake down to nothing? Maybe, maybe the imagine there really was, it was in the peel and everything, man. All right. Well, I know what I'm doing when I get off of the live stream. I'm going to put a banana Take in the banana. microwave at like 450 for like an hour. See what happens. <laughs> <laughs> and then, Start a fire. you know, we get we get this epic rant with this clip I'm about to pull up from from that scene. Oh, fuck. God, suck it, bow, bow, fucker, bow. ass, fuck. Oh, god damn it. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> you ever just accidentally grab a cookie sheet? No, Forget. never. Yeah, now, nah, like, never. I don't know any level of inebriation that's going to make me reach into a hot oven barehanded. No, I've, Unless I've tried Chuck to pull Norris, off of a just do rack. It. Yeah. I've, I've burned my hand on a rack before, but I've never grabbed a hot pan <laughs> rack like this. Yeah, no, <laughs> I've, uh, so I've used the burner on top and then taken something off of the burner and turned the burner off and, and forgotten. And then, you know, touched that. So that's that's just as bad, I suppose. <laughs> not yeah, and yeah. also not as fun or not fun. So, yeah. But yeah, I mean, everybody kind of works well in this movie in their parts. There's no one who I'm like, I wish they would have cast somebody else. Like everything they shoots, just so much fun. Yeah, this is this is uh also the last gasp of this type of comedy as well. Raunchy like, comedy. Yeah, yeah. Like we're kind of getting into an era where people are like, mm, we're, you know, we're insensitive and this movie doesn't give a fuck about being insensitive. And that's, it's like perfect. Cause it fits right in with all that stuff, like revenge of the nerds or whatever. Like it's just got that. Uh, yeah. Well, Racing. With, with the world we live in now and, you know, the legalization of marijuana and edibles and, you know, all the different way these things are marketed stoner comedies have kind of like taken a back seat. It's not, yeah. it's not as like cliche anymore. Not taboo anymore. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, cause like, yeah, everyone is walking around vaping or whatever. They're all yeah, like, half, like, they're all half high. Every, yeah, everybody. <laughs> it's, it's white collar, <laughs> blue collar. I mean, you got, doctors lawyers you got anybody out there that you know prescribed or not prescribed you know they're partaking in in some some form whether it's edibles um you know they smoke yeah. it they vape it whatever it's it's not as yeah that that archetype you know the the spicolis you know the the people from grandma's boy the the woodersons of the Cheech uh, and Chong. yeah they're you just know, normal that, people now they're just <laughs> yeah like that as long that as era, it, as long as it doesn't give me deer antlers <laughs> I got something for that, by the way. Are, are you ready for this? It's super quick because I kept getting copyright claimed. God damn it. I really wanted to put the beginning of Fallout Boy on there, but every time I kept getting copyright claimed and I was like, damn it. That ruins my joke. But I was like deer antlers and then Fallout Boy pops up in my 
on my Facebook and I'm just like, he's got deer antlers, man. It's perfect. Well, we are an hour in and I do have one more clip. That's a little over five minutes that we can watch since okay. we've been talking about the cast. You know, there's one cast member that we haven't, we haven't talked about at all. And, uh, you know, shut up monkey. I got company dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's the monkey so i will pull this up and then y'all can enjoy it with us if you ever want me to pause talk about something tell me to pause it and we'll talk about it and uh it's a fun little behind the scenes clip about working with a monkey on set i got a few more talking points i learned about it from the uh project nerd podcast that peter dante went on have you ever worked with animals on set before uh, yeah, I walked, I walked a dog in Tapehead Return of Jacob Cobb. Uh, <laughs> I worked. We we also have now too. <laughs> I, I worked. Cat? I worked with Dylan. No, um, my <laughs> first my first film gig was working with a dog. That was the whole deal. The whole deal was it was a, a kids movie about a dog, and that's that's different, man. Because you have to have a a dog trainer on set, so you have your director, your assistant director, you got the boom mic, whatever camera operator, everybody, all the actors doing everything they're doing. Plus you have everybody off to the side doing stuff, which is also distracting for the animal, but the animal's supposed to do a specific thing or interact with someone on camera. And there is, there is a ton, a ton of like wrangling going on because you may be in the middle of a take and then the dog would like squat and take a shit, you know? And so you're like, well, Okay. Or the dog would hear something. Someone would set something down off to the side. So the dog would turn and you're like, well, again, again, again. So they, they say not to work with dogs or, or with animals or kids. And in that movie, it was like, that's basically Both. what it was. Yeah. <laughs> the lead was a little girl. And then the other lead was a dog and it was difficult for sure. Uh, a lot of long, long days, which you can't really do legally with a kid. <laughs> so uh, a lot of corners being cut, but uh, I'm not going to say what director <laughs> did that. So I know it wasn't me. Did. Wasn't me. Damn it. <laughs> I'd never make a kid work a 16 hour day. Unless it was not on paper and I had to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, We'll learn some some of what it what it's like to work with a monkey on set. Scary. Don't touch me, monkey. Oh, Harry the champ. He could be the poster as far as I'm concerned. He lo looks great as a monkey. And looks camera. much better than a monkey suit. First movie I'm working with a with a monkey, a chimp. Harry. Uh, I gave the monkey so three Harry. Viagra. Yeah. That's his name in the movie, Monkey. Like, like I'm complaining we I wrote it, but it's just funny that he calls him monkey because the trainer the first day when we were, oh the monkey the monkey he's like it's a chimp a monkey has a tail a chimp is an ape so he's like no 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 it's like you're not gonna call a snake a dog harry the chimp is definitely the funniest person in the movie harry is pretty sweet probably the best actor uh, in the cast uh pretty reliable brings it every take good find it find it that's the other thing is like if the chimp and I were doing a scene here, there would be like a trainer going, find it, touch it, find it. And there's literally a guy yelling that. He's going, find it, find it. And it's like, you got to try to, you know, get your lines in, in between the find it's and the touch it's and the grab it's. I use a word or a hand signal or something to tell him what I want him to do. And it's just like teaching a, a little kid. I have like video of like Dante like punching the monkey like in the gut, like wrestling with him, like taking him down. And Dante was like, "Fuck, what are you looking at? Fuck, monkey, very good." But they, uh, no, they loved each other. It was great. You know, just like everybody, but he's got a crush on Dante, and he wants to kiss Dante every time they're on camera together. I don't blame him. Dude, no one's rolling. <laughs> okay. The monkey was trying to teach him to French kiss him, which I thought was a little inappropriate. I got to hang out with him a few times before shooting and became very close with him. So every time he sees me, he grabs my hand and he gives me a kiss. That was really cute, the way he would uh, hold his hand 
and uh, hold his balls in his mouth. Oh. <laughs> oh, he went straight for the balls! Get it on film! He's ripping his dick off! Jim, seriously, you just thought you had like another hairy person in between you, you know? He literally was like watching Covert and I do our lines and kind of being in the moment. It was awesome. And of course, there's the finger in the mouth, Covert saying that uh, even the trainer was grossed out about it. That's still top 10 grossest things I've ever seen. And I was like, dude, that's fucking disgusting. And he's like, what? I'll do anything for comedy. Monkeys, hands in my mouth? <laughs> I'll fucking lick a monkey's finger, man. And politely, the trainer Keith said I wouldn't. <laughs> it's like, oh, you're going to get like some rare flu. It's going to make you shit out of your eyes. The minute we put it in the script, Laughed and laughed and thought, oh god, this is gonna be the best. You know, a chimpanzee driving down the street. If I saw it in real life, I'd laugh. So I figured I'd laugh if I saw it in a crazy movie, too. It's funny because it looks like he's looking in the rearview mirror, but he's actually looking at the trainer. So here's the chip driving, he's like. But they would do the rearview mirror up here, too. I mean, they train him to do all these things. And he was also mostly obsessed with Dante's feet. He like always wanted to touch them. And so while we were shooting, he was grabbing his foot and the trainer was like, no, up here. And he made him put the hands up there. But what you forget about a monkey, he's got feet hands. Yeah, monkey feet hands. He reached over with his foot and grabbed Dante's big toe. Covert started laughing too loud. Harry thought Covert was gonna hurt me. So he actually reaches out to bite Covert. <laughs> Like this at one time, and, and Keith, you can hear him yell. No! <laughs> drive, dude! Get in your seat! Drive, <laughs> monkey! Drive! And then he does it again, and this is the cut they use in the movie. <laughs> Watch Harry the Chimp try to bite Cobra in the face. You put it in slow mo if you need to on DVD, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you can't just go, hey, relax, please. Please relax. He has no idea what you're saying. <laughs> you know what I mean? All he hears is like, Chimpanzees wear diapers, and uh, that means that they don't need to call for a bathroom break. They can just decide to take a bathroom break in the middle of a scene. God. <laughs> oh, dude. Was it you? <laughs> I'd be like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Actually, there was one where there's a special effect where something blows up. You know, the guy's like, okay, it's going to be loud, the door's going to blow, and this and that. You know, we all knew. And you forget, oh. Monkey didn't understand a word that guy was saying. The thing blew up and the monkey crapped his pants. And then the trainer was like, we need about 10 minutes. We got to change his diaper. Yeah, like, again, like, the monkey has no fucking idea what's going on. But it, it literally scared the crap out of the monkey. How does Dante not react? <laughs> <laughs> So do you want to work with a monkey on set? <clears throat> no, no, I don't uh, at all. <laughs> uh, it's it's endearing. It's cute on this side of the screen away from it, you know, but they're death machines. Right. Uh, there, there's a horror movie I had <laughs> Dylan watch up Shockma and it's Dude, a baboon. It's scary, scary as shit. And it's a real baboon. They never use a, an animatronic or a dude in a suit. And they literally like are just filming this baboon chasing people and they put like another baboon on the side of this door because they were like in heat or whatever. And got this baboon just attacking this door. Like it's supposed to be attacked, like trying to get people on the other side. And if like, if that baboon got a hold of you, you're dead. Like it's, yeah, I don't want no part of that, dude. No, they, they couldn't make that movie today. No. Yeah, cause, <laughs> Cause that it was, it was full on like full sprint shoulder checking a door. Yeah, and it was it. it was bleeding. It yeah. hurt itself trying to break this door down. And you're like, wow. Like, yeah, if it got through that door, whatever's on the other side is getting shredded. I wouldn't want to be the camera guy five feet away from it. That's for sure. So, no. No, I'm not acting with any chimps. <laughs> like putting his finger in his mouth. We're going to lead to the actual Planet of the Apes franchise in real life. Yeah. Uh, which shout out to the new one coming out. Let's go. Yeah. But uh hope it's good. It will be. But, yeah, All the other ones are. So they had, you know, the, Peter Dante and Harry the Chimp 
had great chemistry on set during this movie, and there was a reason for that. So for about a month leading up to the movie, they actually had play dates so that they could get familiar with each other, and that's that's why they had such good chemistry. But I also found out that um, apparently when you're working with chimps on set, you have to keep them under six years old because after they get to that age, they start becoming more aggressive and very possessive of the people that they like as they get older. It will literally yeah. rip your dick off. <laughs> I, I can could, I could see that. Uh, yeah. You guys ever seen Project X? I have not. Old Matthew Broderick movie. Um, he's in like a space program, and it's all uh, it's him, and then a bunch of chimps. I've and, never seen it. Yeah, so they repeatedly like put these chimps in like high G situations and whatnot, and this one older chimp like loses his shit. It's pretty. It's a good movie. It's old school eighties flick. Nice. Yeah, I have to check it out. It's on my list. I, I'm. I'm not. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not fucking around with no chimps, dude. <laughs> That's there was. One other story that he had, and it was how um, Dante didn't actually like how the handler was treating Harry during the filming of the movie. So he found out he could feed the chimp. And so he would feed him red vines and different things between takes to the point where they had bonded so much that one day the handler came up and was like, hey, you got to stop feeding him red vines because he's forming a huge alliance with you and he might kill me. <laughs> yeah, so he's like, you. all right. So, so he started sneaking them to him after that instead of being <laughs> obvious about it. Death machines, man. I'm telling you <laughs> what's that famous Joe Rogan quote. Like we've, we've never seen a, a gorilla or never taught gorilla proper powerlifting techniques. So we've never seen them at their full potential. <laughs> <laughs> right? Be terrifying. <laughs> Get some gorillas, get a silver back on pre-workout. I'm telling you, uh, I saw Dylan tear through a door in like less than <laughs> 10 seconds. It was fun. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're the closest thing to a gorilla. I know. Uh, that's <laughs> I mean that in the most loving way possible. That's what my son always says. He's like, you're like a silver back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so completely unrelated, but talking about death machines, um, did you know that the car that the Asian kid drives in this movie is actually in another movie? I did not. Well, you're about Fast to find furious. out what movie. <laughs> he... I do. You have a picture of the car. I do. Show that Dylan... first. Oh, I only... they're only together. Ah. Dylan had a good yeah. guess, though. All right, only look at one of them. Can't look at the other one then. <laughs> okay, I'm going to zoom all the way in on the car, and then I'm going to let you guys guess. Ooh, I know. All right. All right, what uh, movie was I know where this... that's at. Which which car? Uh, what, what, what's it from? Oh, man. Um, Get him to the Greek. Negative. A, no? Uh, a dark-complected fella drives it. Is this gone yeah. in 60 seconds? <laughs> <laughs> nope. I All right, Shade, no you want to let the cat out of the bag? Was it too fast, too furious? Too fast, too furious. Uh, I was close. It's the very beginning. Very beginning scene where they do their street race. It's there, but it's, I think it's once or twice more after that, too, I think. But At least the ending, he's in, he's in that, that and it is, jumble. It's, it's the exact same car. Like it's not just exact the same, same car. Exact nice. same car. There's just a couple of different stickers on the fender. Everything else, everything I could find said it was the exact same car. So to me, it looks a little off. Like the the front bumper's different, and had some that bottom yellow upgrades. stripe isn't on the side skirt either. Had some upgrades, <laughs> but. I got a picture sent to me about someone working with a with an animal actor. Yep, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> Oddly enough, behind we only, the scenes of Tapehead, we yep. only see Danny outside of the house. He's never yep. inside the house in the movie. He's he's only in the behind the scenes and the outtakes. Which that's it's that's a whole uh, 
different ball of wax when you're filming and you don't want animals because I, at the time I had two cats and the dog. Um, so shooting around them while not like corralling them, they were in the house doing their own thing and we just kind of shot around them and they never really sneak into any scenes. None that I've seen. If anyone with Eagle eyes spots them, that'd be cool. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you guys have animals, so you know what it is. Like if you're shooting around them, but now you just include them so you don't have to worry about it, you know? One of your cats ruined our craft service table, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my cat peed on all the chips. <laughs> the oh. whole fucking oh. box. Oh. Yep. And to be fair, he was he, he was, was in old. real bad shape, yeah. and he was he was kind of on his way out, and we were like, we're going to hang on, you know, make sure he's – you know, ready to go when, when that time comes. And he was just, he was very irritated that people were in our house and he just peed all over all the food. <laughs> yep. He's on everything. And it's like, all right, that's, time, that's that time now. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Fuck it. Yep. Fuck he just chip. started, started completely defying us around that time. <laughs> <laughs> so there's also, so, so we've kind of talked about various aspects of this movie. And the one thing we haven't talked about is how, you know, it bombed originally, but it got destroyed by critics. Critics hate well, it. And it seems like critics hate any movie that's like off-color comedy, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Or they just hate that stuff. Like, why are you even reviewing it if you don't like like the genre to begin with? But... Rotten Tomatoes has an interesting score. Now I hate Rotten Tomatoes to begin I hate them with. As well, yeah. But look at that! Look at that yeah. difference between the audience and the critic score. You see that? That's yeah. typical, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the people who actually like movies <laughs> aren't critics. Yep, that's a <clears throat> that's why our our thing for three B video we actually have a logo. Uh, and we call things uh, popcorn as fuck. And we have a logo that looks like the certified tomato meter, but it's uh, certified popcorn as fuck because like our scale is so, so much different from the way that they do things, you know, and uh, the, the cheesier and the more goofy and uh, oddball of a movie it is, the chances are we're going to like it more. So uh, because it, yeah, it takes those that. risks and says those different things. I've been hearing something similar from other guys that I like to watch on YouTube that they'll call something a, a good popcorn flick, meaning, you know, it's not something you're taking too seriously. You're meant to mm -hmm. have fun, get lost in the movie, but it's not something that's like, there's a difference between that and then watching something where you have to turn your brain off to watch it. Yeah. You know, so well, yeah, I'll, you don't I'll describe always... stuff to people like it's, it's a fun movie. It's a very good popcorn flick. Don't take it too seriously. It doesn't take itself that seriously. You don't always want to have to like take a deep dive into why the the director used red instead of yellow. You know, there's there's all this pretentious stuff that the critics love, and the typical fan doesn't always want to have to dice decipher. Mm -hmm. And there's <clears> certain <throat> movies that are meant for that, and others that are not. Yeah. Surface but... level, surface level, surface level scratches and deep cuts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Like it got a 33 out of 100 on Metacritic. Cinema score, though, gave it a B. Ronnie Sheeb of Variety Magazine wrote Even Sandler diehards may pass on this mostly derivative Hayean to compulsive computer geekdom and male sexual dysfunction. Whatever all that mumbo jumbo. <laughs> it's critic shit. Like, it's, yeah. it's one of those I'm holier than thou. Yeah quotes I'm like the only critics i like are youtubers who only are talking shit on movies that they really feel like should be talked shit on and then will still praise stuff that they think is worth being praised and yeah they'll dive deep into things but uh, to quote egon spangler you know print is dead like we're not seeking out these written reviews and going well you know joe schmo from movie poop shoot.com says this sucks or whatever, you know, like who cares? Like we're going to form our own opinions and uh, yeah. Like, and then sometimes you might find a movie that you've never even heard of from a YouTuber that uh, 
they may riff on, but they're also, like you said, going to give you the, the good, the good and the bad with the ugly and whatever. And, um, you know, it's going to, it's going to influence you to watch a movie that you otherwise never would have given a chance. So, and I found a lot of them that I'm like, I really (laughs) vibe with these guys. I like a lot of the same stuff they do. We've got some similar views. We don't always agree on certain things. There'll be a movie or a show here or there where I'm like, I completely disagree, but that's fine. (laughs) Don't not trying to live in an echo chamber. There's plenty of movies around just between the four of us that we have very differing views on. Oh yeah. And, Maybe one day we'll have a stream about one of those movies so we can we can have a little bit of fun going back and forth about it. I feel like you're but... hinting at Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I was talking about Prey. Ah, yes. Well, Prey's oh, amazing. I love Prey. Like two out of four. <laughs> Super mid. Super no. mid. No, man. That's... Jades, how'd you feel about Prey? I don't think he's seen it. The Do Predator, like- the new Predator movie, the Native American one. You need to see it today. Yeah, it's <laughs> like I like the bear scene, and that was about it. Not- uh, there's a lot to love about that movie. <clears throat> Grr. <laughs> <laughs> see, it'd be a fun conversation to have mm-hmm. when we're not just agreeing, you know. Mm-hmm. But this film did win a few awards. Some rats. The High Times 2006 <laughs> Best Stoner Movie, Best Actor in a Movie, and Best Pot Scene in a Movie. <laughs> nice. I'll unlike so. my mic when I feel like talking. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no Shades, what was your favorite scene? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, our man of many words <laughs> I mean Shades why don't you show everybody your whole shirt it would make sense <laughs> <laughs> nice this guy does yeah, anybody I mean, that was a good one for today does anybody actually sleep in a car bed do you have a car bed did you get one prescribed to you, Thundarius? Oh, well, my parents are are getting me getting me spinners for it here pretty soon. <laughs> maybe a maybe a CB radio so I can talk to other car bits. No, then I just want to start. That's just the the cup and string thing. <laughs> I just want to start quoting uh, uh next Friday. They tens. I keep them clean though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's there's a movie we need to put on the list. I think yeah. I think next next Friday is the superior film in that franchise. Pinky come in here and catch you catch you doing X game shit on the counter. He's gonna fire both our asses. <laughs> day day, that's your cousin. <laughs> you can get at it quick. Yeah. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Um I, I don't know. I don't have anything else. What do you got, Thundy? Well, I got Four more pages of notes. All right. (laughs) (laughs) I don't have nearly as much as as last week, but I mean, the movie itself is fun. You could talk all day about various scenes and and things that happened during the film. Um, You know, it'd be fun to be a game tester. The whole the whole point where he's he's talking about living with these three sex crazed women and then. The, everyone in the office finding out it was his grandma and her friends like super good uh now we just need to wait for um arcade one up to put out a dance dance revolution cabinet so at least one of us can have it and then we can have a little dance dance revolution tournaments and <laughs> yes. see who among the four of us can get the high score i have zero rhythm so yeah i'm not much of a dancer <laughs> on lock <laughs> we'll put i got rhythm but i can't dance Put that in your basement. Yeah. Yep. I'm on my way. <laughs> uh, Cyber School Media is going live for the Dance Dance Revolution Tournament of the Century. I think I would fuck that thing up <laughs> if I put my full weight on it. I'm gonna. <laughs> it's made for grownups. Not me. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. Where he's like, you know, yeah. Take off your Woody Allen jacket. <laughs> 
Dude. just blows him out of the water. New high score. What does that mean? Did I break it? <laughs> Speaking of high score, did you notice the high score on the Frogger game? No. 420. <laughs> well, if you're going to say that one, what was the number on the house? 420. Ooh. I sense a theme here. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but yeah it's a it's a fun movie um i don't really have much else unless there's more about it or different scenes we want to discuss um gotten through all of my notes on it i was kind of hoping we would have some more behind the scenes and director's commentary stuff to take us another half an hour but perhaps next month with groovy yeah well, should we let everybody know then what we're actually going to cover next month? No. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you got to get them on the hook. You forgot smoking lamp. Yes. <laughs> now, I don't have it drug into this one. Um, so let me drag it in here. I had it set up for the five person stream. Boom. This is what we're covering next month on May 4th, even though it's Star Wars Day, because Dustin hates Star Wars. I do. <laughs> With a fiery passion. <clears throat> I'm sorry. But Starship Troopers, on the other hand, it's a perfect movie. <laughs> so, yeah, so we're still going to keep it sci-fi themed. We're going to talk Starship Troopers, especially since it's so popular right now because of Helldivers 2. <laughs> And I want to play that game. I just keep seeing how amazing that game is, how much fun people are having with that game, and how it's a directly like inspired by the Starship Troopers movie. So figured it was it was worth uh, worth talking about since it's so popular in the cultural zeitgeist right now. But yes, so it's a it's a fun one. Dustin's never seen, seen Star Wars, man. Yeah, it's been a while since I've watched it, too. Uh, I just had it on a couple weeks ago because uh, we watched the Everything Wrong With video, and I was like, there's nothing wrong with this movie. So then I was like, I'm going to go. I have the super bit DVD, you know, the, the highest uh, resolution DVD you could buy at the time. And uh, it still looks fucking good. Uh, a lot of those effects really, really age well, but I'll get into yeah. that next month. <laughs> and we're talking about the sequels. This is another one where we just we just don't talk about the sequels. Yeah. There's just Paul the Verho- movie. If Paul Verhoeven isn't attached, it it didn't happen. So I've watched many a video, a few videos, I guess, of people breaking <clears throat> down the whole franchise. And they're just like, what were they thinking? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we're about to get a brand new Matrix movie. I'm good. <laughs> hey, the only reason I'm 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 mildly interested is because it's by the guy who directed and partly wrote Cabin in the Woods. Yeah. And some yeah. Buffy and some Angel and a whole bunch of other. He's got quite a great resume. We'll put it that way. Stuff that I personally like. Yeah. So, we'll see if he can uh, see. write the write the ship, as it were. Yeah, it, it took yeah. a bad turn. The first one was good. Mm-hmm. that's pretty much all I ever talk about is the first one and maybe a little bit of Animatrix I don't mind the Animatrix yeah. not bad that was solid but yeah then I'm pretty much done <laughs> well boys anybody got anything else or are we gonna wrap this thing up early today it might be an early out day I mean it's a nice Saturday go outside <laughs> and do some stuff Touch grass, fly a kite. Apparently, yeah, get blown <laughs> away. You can go parasailing. I mean, I got a clip. I'm gonna pull up here on on the stream. I realized I'm, I'm a huge scared. <laughs> oh, it didn't load right. This thing. I realized it. I'm a huge oh. pussy, and I got really scared. <laughs> it's really embarrassing. I really wanted to use that the whole stream. <laughs> I've been waiting for it. It just didn't work out. <laughs> I got all these clips from the movie I just didn't use. We'll get we'll get back to using all these cutaways. But uh, I do have one more clip. So before I have one more clip, don't leave. 
you're in the chat. I got one more clip that I will play before we hit the outro. But uh, before we hit that clip, I'm going to go around and everybody talk about what you maybe have going on, what you got coming up, if anything. Um, for us, we've got, <clears throat> if you haven't seen our Dark Side Brews video that we last made, the uh, if you go over to Dark Side Brews on the old YouTube, um, uh, we did a beer review. And we did a little sketch in it that was pretty fun that we had our own animal actor in. We had uh, one of our cats in that video. And we may have had a cameraman named Dylan. It was, it was nice working yeah, with an actual cameraman yeah. instead of having to shoot ourselves a, very apart and having to <laughs> stitch it all together because there's only two of us. But we got some more videos coming up over there. We just went to the Rich Show in Lincoln that we were talking about doing a video from. But that one might be a little little more delayed um yeah we got a few things coming up we got next month's stream about all i got you got anything shades negative uh the only thing i was thinking about was things that i find uh interesting per se you know what i'm talking about nope the ends Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'd be a fun one. Yep. We're trying to get our interview series up and running, though, so we're not going to repurpose or make shorts out of any of this content today because we're going to be focused on getting mm -hmm. our interview series up and running so we can have our first guest on. It'll be fun. So you got anything coming up, Dylan, that you're working on? Uh, I'm about a year out from Silverback Lane um, doing some stunts, and I got the lead role in that movie. Um, hopefully Dustin can put me on screen before that. So that's what I got coming. Yes. Uh, spicy videos. We've got a few planned and actually yeah. Dylan's going to be in our first video for our spicy I'm, videos on. Let's I'm get scared. Spicy. I watched a bunch you of just, videos for that. And uh, it, it's kind of got me spooked, man. Yeah, I go I, in blind like, on these things. I don't want any, anything influencing me or letting me know if it's going to suck or not until uh, I try it. So I, uh, I may or may not have snooped and, it's i'm not exactly thrilled it's uh, it's scary man if if i said who i watched it wouldn't go well so so i'm so i'm thinking maybe what you guys want to you got some time next weekend do you you guys want to want to film our first spicy video on the new channel i mean potentially i'll, we'll, I'll we'll do it fun. like i said i'm not going to chicken out but yeah i watched uh some some pretty heavy hitters that i know from the the spice community and the results were were a little daunting yeah all right so oh, we're man. gonna die yeah, yeah i mean i'm <laughs> nervous for you guys it, it's gonna be rough <laughs> one of the ones i watched uh yeah dude didn't seem happy about what he was doing and <laughs> no i saw uh one guy he straight up retired it retired. <laughs> <laughs> he did i watched and he's like this is my last video. I'm done. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> if things get hotter than this, I'm not playing anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A, dude, a dude retired. <laughs> oh, no. Cool. Hey. And that's what we're starting with. Yeah. Hey, uh, if either one of you haven't been here in town to the sugar makery, we got some interesting stuff in there. I got some, uh, I don't even remember what they are, like Nevada Reaper soda. And something oh. with pepper. like I went in a terrible idea, but I'm gonna try them. Nice. I, I bought I bought at least two, so I'm gonna make Thundy try it too. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, I love Sugar Makery. Uh, we go to the one in Glenwood a lot, so I'm stoked there's one in Shan. Yeah, and it's actually, nice. Uh, it's real nice. Uh, my my wife and daughter just came home with some goodies from there. So, so if they want to sponsor a stream in the future or a yeah. video, hook it up. <laughs> Well, yeah. Anyway, Dustin, what do you got going on with old 3B video? What do you got coming um, up? So as soon as the weather officially breaks and I'm, you know, not worried about being cold, uh, we have uh, two shorts that we want to do. Uh, one we I scripted last summer, and then we just we just didn't get around to it because we were the tapehead promotion was in full effect. So we didn't get around to shooting, but, uh, so we have two shorts that I would like to get done before Halloween. 
And then other than that, um, on the 3B video YouTube channel, you'll start to notice uh, we've been putting up a lot of shorts uh, from our podcast, the Deep Cut podcast, which is available on all podcast apps. But um, <clears throat> we're coming rapidly approaching our 100th episode. And somewhere around after the 100th episode, I should have my new set built. So we'll start doing a, a full length video podcast. Um, and the potential to have Dylan on more often and, and other guests more often because I'll have a set and I won't have to do things um, through split screen and things like that, just be able to have people come over. So that's a change that's happening. Um, hopefully soon because it's expensive and time consuming. And, but uh, yeah, that's, that's on the horizon, but just other than that, just podcasts and shorts and all of that stuff. That set is beautiful. I mean, I get to see pics of this thing all the time. I'm ready for that first episode. It's getting there, man. Glory. One day at a time. <laughs> well, this has been Hall of Fandom. We are Cyber School Media and 3B Video. And uh, we will see you guys next month for Starship Troopers. And I got one last video to share with you guys as we roll on out of here. So here we go. Namaste, you guys. I'm really sorry to have to leave this conversation. But I will... <coughs> Adios, turd nuggets. Monkey and I gotta go cook the Thanksgiving dinner. You coming over? He's bartending. Later. <laughs>